Okay, uh, today is about Howard Zinn. Um, Howard Zinn is, <clears throat> had been, um, uh, one of America's preeminent left-wing historians. Uh, he created a genre of history um, uh, that, that had not been even thought of. And I like how somebody had put it uh, 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 to me a couple of days ago. Um, he writes from the loser's perspective. Um, and writes from a labor direction. And, uh, and uh, he, he was a great man and he was an activist and an author and a uh, and a uh, an academic and a journalist um, and December tends to be our month of academics and journalists um, so uh, he was born he was born August 24th 1922 to uh, Jenny Rabinowitz and uh, Eddie Zinn uh, I bring them up because it's it's very important for you to understand where he came from. Uh, his mother was from Eastern Siberia um, and came here just before the break of the First World War. Um, and uh, her arrival in, the, in, in America with her parents, uh, well, her guardians, I should say, uh, an aunt and uncle, um, she, uh, she exclaimed that she was, she was shocked about the the temperature and um, and how you know wonderful the climate was here in, in, in America and she landed in New Jersey <laughs> so uh, and of course Eddie Zinn came here about 1919 from the Austro-Hungarian Empire he attended Thomas Jefferson High uh, and and uh, really studied creative writing uh, at the time, the principal was Elias uh, Lieberman, and he was a new principal. Uh, he was young, he was vibrant, and he was also leader of one of the New York schools. Uh, and I, I don't mean that as in the, the, the actual school, but a school of, liter uh, of, of literature um, at, at that particular point in time. So... Uh, He's he's doing all of this he's doing all of this creative writing, and um, and uh, it's uh, I don't know it's it, he 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 claims it wasn't for him he's, he's starting to see that this isn't this isn't his forte. Um, so World War Two comes up, and he he had said uh, in in an interview with Charlie Rose that. He was incredibly eager uh, to fight fascism, and um, and that's strange because we know him as an anti-war activist, um, and uh, and this is uh, this is his as he stated his state of normalcy was this period of time in his life. Uh, so, anyway, so he joined the U.S. Army Air Force as a uh, as a bomber. And uh, he dropped napalm on uh, Royan and Pilsen, which is in, in France, and uh, and then realized when he got back that uh, that probably wasn't a good idea. Um, and he ended up going back a few years later and interviewing all of the people in those villages that he had bombed. And uh, and this is where he ended up becoming uh, an anti uh, a peace uh, peace initiator and an anti-war protester. Um, he didn't, I guess, at that particular point in time, didn't realize the effects uh, that his bombing had done. Uh, and uh, and you'll see that in, in some of his books. Um, so anyways, he comes back to uh, New York and attends NYU on the GI Bill and graduates in 51. By the way, he got married to Rosalind in 1944. I don't want to forget that. Um, 
and then uh, Columbia University Masters in, in 52. Now his master's thesis was on the Colorado coal uh, strikes in 1914. And this is, this is where he gets his, uh, his pro-labor stance. Um, now his thesis was not, uh, didn't go on to be a published book, but uh, his PhD um, uh, that, he, that he got from Columbia, uh, uh, his thesis was, uh, uh, was LaGuardia in, in Congress. That was the very first uh, book that was published. Uh, interestingly enough, it was, it was published first by Columbia Press and Cornell Press, and then was, uh, uh, the third copy was, uh, was uh, published by Beacon Press. Um, and, he, and, and basically what he's talking about with, uh, anybody familiar with Florio LaGuardia? Yeah. yeah. Um, he, was a, he was really ahead of his time. Uh, he was a progressive um, a progressive Republican. Um, odd thing to be, or to th even think of today. Um, and for this, uh, he won the uh, Beverage Prize, which is the uh, best English language book in American history. Um, so he's, right out of the gate, he, he was phenomenal. Um, and his professors at Columbia were... Uh, were Henry Carmen, uh, David Donald, Henry Steele Cominger, uh, and R Richard Hofstadter. Uh, these guys were the the, the uh, preeminent guys in their field. Um, between them, a little over a thousand books were written. Um, and he did his uh, postdoc uh, in East Asian Studies at Harvard. Um, so. Uh, he became professor of, of history and then chair of the department at Spelman in Atlanta. Um, interestingly enough, he was the first chair to ever be fired from the chairmanship. Uh, they felt that he was too uh, liberally aggressive on the issue of race. Uh, slow down. You're going too fast for us. Um, and he was visiting professor at the University of Paris and, and, and Bologna, and then started his, his real career at, at Boston University in 1964 as a professor of, of uh, political science. Um, so in 1958, which is really his, his, his origins, he's writing, he's writing his uh, dissertation on LaGuardia, uh, he starts to write for the nation, he starts to write for Harper's Magazine. Um, uh, he, uh, and then he becomes uh, an advisor with SNCC, uh, Student Nonviolence uh, Coordinating Committee. And uh, anybody familiar with SNCC? No? It was um, uh, a, a student-led peace organization. Uh, specifically at that point in time for the issue of, 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 of race relations and then eventually became anti-war movement. Um, and this is where he becomes, uh, SNCC was kind of like the new abolitionists. That's kind of the best, best way of going about it. And uh, so he became friends with uh, a couple of, uh, of individuals you might notice their names, a fellow by the name of Eric Mann, uh, Marion Wright Eldon, Edelman, Alice Walker, and uh, Stoughton Lynn, and uh, he writes he, he writes his second uh, his his second book, Snick and the New Abolitionist, in 1964. That was that was published by Beacon Press. You're going to see a lot of commonalities running through this. Um, so he joins uh, he joins several marches, uh, becomes friends with a number of uh, Unitarian ministers and uh, disavows his Jewish origins and chooses to march under the flag of the Uni Unitarian Church. Um, so then he writes uh, The Southern Mystique, same year, 1964, published by Beacon Press. I'm going to stop here. 
The next segment is going to be on the anti-war, on his anti-war uh, position. Martha wants to come up and read, or Peter.